Hey guys, welcome back to another video at Jensen's Reptiles. Today I'm going to be showing you my new Asian forest scorpion setup. So here we've got the enclosure outside in the garden. We've been using a fair bit of silicone, so it's always best to do that in a well-ventilated space. Outside is great if you can do it out there. What we've done is put all of the pieces in the tank to see exactly where things would fit well, so that before we added any substrate or anything like that, we had a vague idea of what we wanted the tank to look like. It's always best to map things out first, so before you really start layering things up in there and you're not quite sure where you want to put everything, this makes it a whole lot easier. You get a bit of a vision in your head and then you've got something to go off later and refer back to as well. So we took everything out and we started to look at the substrate. So here are the uh, clay pebbles that I'd be using at the bottom of the tank. Now these form a drainage layer for the plants, which means that any excess water in the soil will drip right through. And rather than the uh, plants becoming waterlogged, the roots will just be absorbing the water that they need and the rest will fall down into these clay balls. So here we are just spreading them into the bottom of the tank. Now this pteropod that we're using doesn't have a very deep substrate layer. So we only put a thin layer of the clay balls, but that's absolutely fine. Something's better than nothing. The next stage is to cut your, your uh, drainage sheet. So this goes over the drainage balls and the substrate goes on top of this. Now. With natural sifting, what would happen is that those drainage balls would all go to the surface of your substrate, making them absolutely useless. This little sheet stops this happening. Now you can buy this commercially made for reptiles or you can get it from any garden store. Um, this is just a roll that I got from a garden store years and years ago. I've got absolutely loads of it and I just cut off pieces whenever I need to use it. The next step is to mix the substrate through. Now this is a mix of um, Arcadia Earth, Sedge Peat, Bark, forest moss, a uh, bit of charcoal in there as well, and some sphagnum moss too. So it really is a bit of a mixture. Uh, reason being, it needs to hold humidity for the scorpion, and it also needs to have a bit of structure so that he can dig in it without it collapsing on him. Now, I'm not worried that any substrate's going to squash him or anything like that. He's a little tank, but um, it's always best to make sure that they can actually burrow, because that's really what they're going to want to be doing. What we did then is poured that substrate into the enclosure. You want to start off with a thin-ish layer and decide where you want to ramp things up. So I'll show you in just a second how we do that by using those pieces that we had in the tank previously. So here you see that big log. Now that substrate layer is still really thin, but that's more so we can position the log and create a deep substrate layer on top of it, behind it and underneath it so that the scorpion has something to tunnel down into. So you can see here, we're covering it up with the substrate, we're filling it in, he's got a nice little burrow going on there, which he can then dig out more later. Another thing, when you're planting, you don't always want to plant, you know, well, pour substrate around your plants. So you can see here, we'd split the plant up, and actually what we'd be doing is digging little holes for them later to make sure there's enough substrate to support their growth. So here you can see we're putting other plants in, we're putting other bits of wood in, um, and Again, just making sure that we build the substrate up around the pieces of wood, but we dig out the holes for the plants. So it's all coming together at this point. Still looks a little bit weird, not quite there yet, but that's absolutely fine. We know it's going to come together. Adding a few more plants and a bits of moss here and there. Uh, the moss really helps keep up the humidity as well. It's something that when you're spraying down, you can really saturate that moss. It holds water incredibly well as long as the temperatures are a little higher. If this were at room temperature, you'd expect to see the moss dying off because the water wouldn't be evaporating quick enough. But here we're using it and we spray down this tank fairly frequently and um, we'll have a reptile radiator in there as well, making sure that the ambient temperatures aren't leaving things too wet and damp. So here you can see the enclosure is really starting to take shape. Now we've got the plants in, we've got little bits of mosses in, the substrate's looking good and the hides are all kind of in place with good amounts of substrate inside them so that we're not going to be worrying about um, him, you know, digging anything out later. He can really go to town digging in this enclosure, which is fantastic. You can see just at the back there, that vent, we actually put a layer of that drainage mesh behind it um, to make sure that no substrate went through, but there was still good ventilation in the tank, which is very important. Um, as far as the plants go, we went for very um, jungly plants that could survive in high humidity, uh, ones that needed a fair bit of watering because you're really gonna be careful how you pick your plants in an enclosure like this. 
that is going to be very humid and potentially a little bit damp from time to time. You want those plants to be thriving in that situation. So here is the finished enclosure. Little added touches of the mushrooms and um, some lichens here and there. Mosses spread around, um, little bits of snippings of the plants also spread around just for some continuity throughout the tank. Now, I'm not saying that every scorpion should have an enclosure exactly like this. I believe that it does provide a, a good amount of enrichment, but this is also a decorative feature in my home. Now, we wanted to make sure the tank was bioactive because having a scorpion, uh, they're not the easiest to clean out when you have an enclosure like this because they're fairly hard to find. So we wanted to make sure this enclosure was fully bioactive um, by adding those cleanup crew that you just saw. And here we are putting little Zoidy back in his enclosure for the first time so that he can have a real good explore and have a good look around. Um, he's a little bit shy, you can imagine, he's just small and people are huge so um, he was a little nervous and he came out for an explore later that evening. Uh, we do have a black light in the enclosure so that we can keep an eye on him at night time but don't worry it's not on all the time, he does have a really decent amount of darkness overnight. As you can see here he's being a typical scorpion and checking his perimeter. He even seems to know where the sliding doors open and tests them a few times in both directions. Um, it freaks me out how smart he is sometimes, um, but he's now settling in really well, which is fantastic. So if you've got any questions, um, just drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you soon. I hope you're having a great day, guys.